Hey everybody, welcome to the playthrough. We are on episode 52 now, and for today's episode, a couple of things to be aware of. It's going to be a bit of a short one, probably only going to be about 20 minutes in length, as this is the last bit of footage that I had left from the most recent one I've been using for the past few episodes. And what we're doing in today's episode is that we're going to go out and hunt down a sea serpent. Now, with sea serpents, they are, they're not difficult to come across, but you can go for quite a while without seeing one. Now, with sea serpents, I'm pretty certain there's only two requirements for spawning for them, which is that, firstly, you're in the ocean biome. They only spawn in the ocean. You can be in the ocean with a sea serpent chasing you and then drag it to the coast of, say, Black Forest or the Meadows or something like that, but they won't actually spawn there. They have to be inside the ocean biome for them to spawn. And the other requirement is that it either has to be nighttime or it has to be a storm. Now, I'm not sure, it doesn't look like it's storming right now, but as you can obviously tell, it is nighttime. It, we have the cold debuff and it's pretty dark. I think it's um, towards the end of our last episode we were just flipping over into nighttime, which is why I decided to jump on the boat. We are currently being chased by a Grey Dwarf Shaman and I keep shooting the boat, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's try and adjust our aim and. Oh, for God's sake, right, okay. Uh, come on, let's angle it. Can we get you from here? Yes, we can. Okay, so yeah, take out the shaman. So yeah, uh, towards the end of our last episode, it was getting pretty close to nighttime, and I decided instead of just jumping into bed like I usually would, I thought that seeing as though we've upgraded all of our tools and weapons and armor and stuff to the next level, we've got our huntsman bow, we've got some iron head arrows, we might as well make use of the nighttime and go out and hunt a sea serpent or two if we can reason I want to do that is that the sea, sea serpents drop a level of food which is much higher than anything we can get our hands on right now and we do now have the facilities to cook that food as well. I'm really looking forward to showcasing that new type of food to you because it is super strong and you can get it this early so yeah hopefully we'll be able to do that uh, whilst uh, hopefully towards the end of this episode anyway. If not then hopefully we'll come back in a future episode and see some uh, we now have the level of weapons and armor to take on serpents. We also have a good boat with plenty of health and enough speed to get away from them if we ever get into a sticky situation. But yeah, this is pretty much the first time that you'd be able to actually cook the food that you get from the sea serpents. As you need to have the larger iron cooking station with the chains and the hooks. The sea serpent drops food that is very large and you can't cook it on the standard ones. You also can't cook it in the cauldron. So, yeah, you need to have that iron cooking station in order to cook these. Ah, here we are. Yep, it is nighttime and it is storming. You can tell by the huge waves, the wind, the rain, and you will see some thunder and lightning as well. Ooh, hopefully we might even see Thor. Possibly. But yeah, so we're just going to head into the ocean biome and sail around for a bit. Pretty much just going to sail up and down until a serpent spawns. Sometimes you get really lucky with them and they'll spawn instantly as soon as you hit the ocean biome. And sometimes you'll be sailing around for days or nights and you won't see one at all. It is really just a, a bit of a random chance in terms of them spawning. But hopefully we'll get one or two. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do whilst we're sailing up and down looking for a serpent is I'm putting our sail at half mast, or half open, or whatever you'd call this. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is I don't want the boat to be going as fast as possible, especially with the wind being pretty much 100% behind us. And that is because when a serpent spawns, sometimes it won't be spawning close enough to you for it to notice you, and it will probably just swim around in a circle for a minute or two and then, and then swim away and then despawn. And the reason why I want to keep the sail as low as possible and keep our speed down is so that when a serpent does spawn, it has a higher chance of swimming around and noticing us, and then it will obviously try and initiate combat and we'll have to fight it. Just depends on where the serpent spawns. If it spawns in front of us, we're, we're very fortunate and we'll be able to attack it and get its attention. Whereas if it spawns behind us, there's a high chance that by the time we've turned around, it will have despawned and swam away so 
yeah, it's, it, it can be a bit of a pain trying to get sea serpents sometimes. The way I've found it, or at least the, the way I've seen it more commonly, is that when you're not looking for sea serpents, they're everywhere, and when you're specifically looking for them, then they're, they're never anywhere. <laughs> they're not even anywhere close to you, so, yeah. Although, for, for, hopefully we'll get fortunate enough in this foray that we can actually see one. Ideally, I'd like to take a few of them on. I really wouldn't want to spend the next 20 minutes sailing around. Oh, well, wow, there's a... Oh, oh, we're going to hit him. Are we going to hit him? No, we're not. Okay, so that is a sea turtle. Random island that kind of spawns in the middle of the ocean. Just avoid that completely. We don't really need anything from it anymore. Thematically, I quite like them, although you never actually see the head of the turtle or its like fins or anything like that. It's just an, an island that if you mine a few things off it, it just sinks into the ocean again. Oh, I think we might have seen one. Yep, yep, there's one just off in the distance there. You can just about make it out. Now I'm going to start shooting arrows at it. Hopefully I can hit it, but hopefully we can just get its attention. If you shoot an arrow close enough to a monster, you can get its attention. Even if you don't hit it, but I think this one might have despawned. Hmm. There was definitely a sea serpent over there. I could see its fins sticking out of the water. We might have to turn the boat around and go and chase it. Although we were going quite fast as well, so it, it could have despawned. That was a very large pillar of lightning. Jeez. What's it? What, I wonder what the lightning's hitting, because there's nothing in the water that would be able to ground it. Hmm. Physics. No, I think it's gone. I think I don't think we've got its attention. Ah, oh, well. I was kind of hoping that it might be swimming over to us, but I think... I really can't see it now. I think it's gone completely. This is the one issue with trying to find sea serpents at night time, is that their fins are quite dark. So when they're swimming around and it's just their fins sticking out the top of the water, you can't really see them very well. Like occasionally you will notice them, but sometimes you won't see them at all, and you might just sail straight past them. Kind of hoping that the lightning strike will happen and it'll illuminate the area so that we can see it. I'm also kind of hoping that we might see Thor flying past as well. But yeah, I think I think that sea serpent had disappeared, so it must have despawned. I think we went a bit too far away from it, so let's refresh our health, uh, our food buffs to start with. We do want a pretty good amount of stamina when fighting sea serpents, as we are going to be using our bow for pretty much the entire thing. Come on, serpents, where are you? Sea snake. Show yourself. No, nope, definitely can't see it. Okay, I think we're just gonna have to go, go sailing again. Well, that was unfortunate, but at least one of them spawned. So again, like I say, we have the correct conditions for serpent spawning. It's night time and it's a storm. Now, with the two conditions for serpents to spawn, I don't know if you get a higher chance of them spawning if it's nighttime and a storm. It certainly doesn't seem like it sometimes. Um, but I know that if you have one of the two, then they do. You can get them to spawn during the daytime as long as it's stormy. If it's quite a, you know, if it's a beautiful sunny day and you're sailing across a nice calm ocean, you're definitely not going to see any sea serpents at all. They just don't spawn in those conditions. I would imagine being dwellers of the deep, they don't like bright lights, which is why they only come out at night time. Now because we had a sea serpent spawn, I'm not going to put the sail out, so I'm just going to go... Single standard speed. Ah, just hit daytime. That's not good. It's still stormy though, so we might get lucky enough that a serpent will still attack us. But yeah, we're going to go single like rudder speed we're not going to use the sail we don't want to go too fast and we're hopefully going to trigger that sea serpent nearby wherever it was to respawn or we might trigger another one. Oh, what was that no that's a fish <laughs> just a fish no need to worry sometimes you can see these kind of big fish jumping out of the the water surface or jump yeah jumping up like there's one on the left you can just about see it um they kind of look a bit like serpents if you're looking for them there's a couple I suppose I'm just being a bit jumpy. Ah, there we go, right in front of us. Perfect. Right. Yes, we've got his attention. There he is. 
It means you can scream at me as much as you want you're taking these arrows. Oh, body's hitting the boat now. Now one thing about fighting sea serpents is it's much, much easier to fight them if you stand in your boat like this and just shoot them with your bow and arrow. They do have really long bodies and you can shoot the tail section of it and still do full damage. It doesn't do less damage for shooting the tail. But one thing about fighting a sea serpent is when you kill it, all the items it drop will be in the water. So you do need to be pretty quick at jumping in there to grab items. There we go, got him. And there we are, sea serpent meat. That is the food that I was hunting for. Now, the sea serpent does drop two other items other than its meat. It drops its scales and it can drop its head as a trophy. Now, with the scales and the head, they will immediately start sinking to the bottom of the ocean. So if you don't jump in the water to grab them immediately... Oh, excuse me, I'm getting a bit gassy. I've just had a cup of tea. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit gassy this morning. Uh, so yeah, so with the items it drops with the scales and the trophy, if you don't jump in the water immediately, those items will sink and you won't be able to get them. Uh, but fortunately enough, the meat does float to the top of the ocean, so when you kill them, you can still pick up the meat. And on average, I usually see picking up either six or seven bits of serpent meat. I haven't seen anything less than six or anything more than seven, but I suppose you could get lucky and get quite, quite a lot from them. And as I have mentioned in a previous episode, I've never seen a sea serpent above the, the basic level, so I've never seen a one-star or a two-star sea serpent. But, again, with it being Ashlands and a new new release and a new update for the game, they could have brought that update in. Maybe they might even have some different sea monsters, although we haven't seen any of them yet. But they could also be specific to the Ashlands biome, so we might have to be closer to their shores in order to see those new monsters, if there are any. One other thing to be aware of with sea serpent meat is that it is a very heavy because of its size and its shape. It is very large and it's very heavy. I think it takes up 10 weight per one piece. So one thing I usually like to do if I'm planning on killing a few of them and gathering lots of it is to dump it in the boat's inventory before continuing on. And another thing to be aware of is that if you are planning to jump directly into the water as soon as you kill the serpent to increase your chances of getting the head and the scales, make sure you have stamina before you do. Because if your boat is moving and you jump off, it will continue to sail away for about half a second to a second after you jump off the boat, and then it will stop. But if you've got no stamina, you will start taking drowning damage as soon as you get in the water, and you could potentially die. I believe the drowning damage you take is, is percentage based on your health, so it doesn't matter if you've got 50 health or 150 health, you'll still take the same damage and you can risk dying, so sometimes it is better to, to take a step back on your boat and just recharge your stamina before jumping in, and you might have to accept that you've lost the head of the scales. Now there is another way to be able to kill sea serpents close enough to the shore without having to risk losing the head of the scales which is one of the items we could have made with the chitin or the chitin that we get uh, that we get from mining the barnacles off the back of the giant sea turtle that is the harpoon now i've never done this in valheim as i've never really like bothered to do it i've never really cared that much about doing it um, although we might try it in this playthrough maybe is that you can make a harpoon and you can harpoon the sea serpent which i believe you can then sail your boat back to the shore whilst dragging the sea serpent along. I have seen a couple of videos of players doing this and you can obviously drag them right to the right to the shore, get off your boat and then take them down with a melee weapon and be able to loot the head and the scales. I've never really seen the head or the scales. I think I've looted one head before because we jumped in the water immediately after killing it and just got lucky with the drop. Um, I've never seen the actual scales so I've never seen the item that you can build with the scales. I think there's a couple of armor pieces you can build with the scales for the sea serpent. But um, usually by the time I start wondering about making that armor level, it's um, or that item, it's uh, we're already over leveled in terms of the gear that we've got. So it's it would be a thematic thing to build, but it wouldn't be something I'd actually use. I believe it's a shield that you can make with the scales. I'm pretty sure it's a shield. But yeah, sea serpents are um, they're a bit of a pain to get the loot from, but. Hopefully in the playthrough when we take on future sea serpents we might be lucky enough to get a head and some scales so that we can see the item and uh, put the, you know, hang the head off of something. 
I'm pretty certain I would love to stick a seat up and head above the entrance of our new comfort building. Kind of like, um, you know, displaying the trophy of a hunt. Something like that. Would make a pretty cool decorative piece to have a sea serpent's head. They are massive. But yes, with our sea serpent killed and with it now no longer being a storm or night time, we are just going to sail straight back home. We might look at cooking the sea serpent meat and maybe turning it into the food item, which I would love to show you. It's incredibly strong, seriously. For swamp level food, it is incredibly strong and you can make it pretty much as soon as you've cooked the sea serpent's meat. There you go, serpent meat. It's um, the food type that we're going to make is it's pretty much going to last you all the way through to the Ashlands, if not even you know further beyond that. You might even uh, sorry Ashlands uh, to the Mistlands, and it might even you might even have, still be using it before you get to the Ashlands. Um, it's just a very very good food that you can make. It's kind of like a reward for taking on a serpent in the difficult conditions that you have to take them on in, which is uh, in the ocean. It's a big risk. Especially before the update, before they stopped boats from being able to sail away. If you jumped off your boat whilst it was still moving, it wouldn't stop. That was an update they had to bring in a quality of life change. Because players would jump out of their boat to loot a sea serpent's corpse to pick up the meat and stuff like that. And then their boat would just sail away from them. <laughs> and they'd obviously be trapped in the ocean. So, yeah. Fortunately enough, they decided to bring that change in because it was uh, griefing players a little bit. And sometimes you'd park your boat on the on like the edge of a coast with the intention of jumping back on and sailing away but then because your boat hadn't stopped moving and because the water's like the tide is going up and down your boat would just keep moving and it would sail away. It would literally just sail away. You'd find it two islands away. Something like that. Hasn't directly happened to me but I have heard some horror stories about players who've parked a boat on one island and it's appeared on another island quite a distance away because of uh, they, they, they hadn't fully stocked the boat or crashed it into the, the shore. That's one of the main reasons why when I park a boat now I pretty much just aim straight at the shore and just wait until the, we actually just crash into it uh, because that's it's, it's ingrained in me to make sure the boat would never just float away. Okay, we are back. Looking quite beautiful. I do like our new building. Again, looks very basic and rudimentary, but I do like it. I quite like that we've got three quite large buildings. Oh, we've sail out by accident. That will be alright as soon as we jump off the boat. Yeah, there we go. Gonna push you out a little bit. Oh, now it's, oh, it's stuck on something. What are you stuck on? Just push it this way. Come on, come on, get back in the water. I just want to avoid the, the tide bashing it into the coast. There we go. Okay. Gonna repair the boat from the damage it took from the serpent. You can see there from the couple of hits we took, it had taken off a, a fair chunk of health, a bit about a quarter of its health bar, maybe a fifth. Uh, so it wasn't too bad, but if we had a sustained battle going for quite a while, then uh, it would have been difficult. We might have been at risk of having the boat destroyed. It's one of the reasons I recommend not taking on sea serpents in the car. If it doesn't sail fast enough and it doesn't have enough health, you have to be really accurate and have really good damage bow and arrows in order to take it down. Right, so here's our iron cooking station and there's our five bits of serpent meat. We have six in total, so there is one still left in our bags. Now with cooking on this, this iron cooking station, it does take a lot longer. I believe it's about 30 seconds when you're using the standard cooking station over a campfire. And this iron one for the larger bits of meat, like the sea serpent meat, I believe it takes a minute. So we are just going to go off and do a couple of other little bits whilst we're waiting for it to cook. While um, simultaneously trying to keep our ears open for the hissing sound of the food being finished from cooking. But it does still follow the same rule of if you, um, if you don't take the food off the iron cooking station after it's cooked, it will then turn into coal about 30 seconds to a minute afterwards. Oh hey, we're standing on the hearth and it's not taking damage. Oh, that's strange. Usually these things start taking small amounts of... Oh, nope, there we go. You heard that little ding. That was us standing on the... Uh... Ah, there we go. Serpent's done. We were standing on the hearth and it was taking damage. Okay, cooked serpent meat and our new crafting recipe, the serpent stew. Alright, let's have a look at it. 
Serpent Stew gives you 80 health and 26 stamina for 30 minutes. You need a mushroom and a piece of honey and one bit of serpent meat to make one serpent stew. It's a fantastic cheap recipe. That all you really need. The only difficult part of this recipe is the serpent meat itself. And it's an absolutely fantastic level of food that's going to carry us all the way through till the end of Mistlands, if not even the Ashlands. It's really good. I cannot stress enough how good of a food level it is. It's one of my go-to foods for fighting bosses from the swamp onwards. We are definitely going to want plenty of this when we take on the swamp boss and pretty much every boss after that. 80 health is a huge increase. So yeah, I, can't, I really can't stress enough how good of a food level it is. I highly recommend farming a few sea serpents throughout a playthrough just to make sure you've got some stocks of this food. With the half an hour buff as well, you can kill a couple of sea serpents and have them last quite a while as long as you only save that food for specific situations like boss fights or exploring a new zone stuff like that but yeah fantastic level of food i believe with the sea serpent stew the sausages and our standard health we should have about 175 health which is really really good level of health for for the current level that we're at so yeah, this is the sea serpent stew and the sea serpent meat. We have successfully killed one and harvested its meat. So yeah, I think we'll end the episode here. So thank you everybody for watching. Again, apologies it's a, a very short one, but I hope you've enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next episode.